She's so ugly. When she goes into the bank, they turn the surveillance cameras off. <laughs> mama, yo mama, she's so ugly. When she goes to the beautician, they take eight hours for the quote. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, welcome guests, fellow Toastmasters. In the modern world, communication is becoming so much more important. We shoulder the heavy burden of looking after an entire world. And so with things like trash talk, we are able to quickly elevate people's emotions up to anger, to humor. We need, as Toastmasters, to do so much more. Tonight, what I'd like to help us all do is do something a little more noble with our communication. Not just talk about trash, but to use trash talk to make a difference. Think of it. Think of beautiful BC, the most beautiful place in the world, without the trash. Being able to walk down the dike and not see any of those polluting plastic cups or those alcoholic hangovers, those crushed cans, the broken glass of the bottles, the supersized fast food leftovers with those ravens and crows pecking at them. A place where we could walk, where people, little people, animals, dogs, the fish, the birds, the plants could all flow, uh, grow and flourish. Picture this, you're walking down the park, the dog park, and there's this cute little kid. It's a beautiful sunny day, nice and warm, and he's, he's eating a candy, and he's got that chocolate all over his face, and you have that that contented little smile, because you don't have a dog, so there's no poop to scoop, you don't have a kid, there's no chocolate to clean up, everything is well in the world. And then he just drops that wrapper. What do you do? Are you one of those folks that pick up the wrapper and throw it away? Hands up, who would do that? A couple. Well, bless you for caring. No, congratulations. But really, what have we achieved? That guy, He's a baby trash monster. And if you've just picked it up and put it away, you haven't changed him. In fact, you've made him a spoiled baby trash monster. Hands up, who's prepared to talk trash to that baby? That's what we want to see. Most people at this stage are saying to themselves, well, what about his parents? What happens if he cries and they get upset? So what, I say to you? Life is just a whole sequence of table topics, opportunities. <laughs> Darren Lacroix said it best. He's the 2001 world champion of public speaking, and he said, never turn down stage time. This is just stage time. You assemble a quick table topic, you think to yourself, who's my audience? It's just that baby trash monster, parents over there somewhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the high impact table topic. Hey you, I saw you put that trash, it's right there by the bin. Pick that up and put that in there. If you leave that trash on the floor, some poor little puppy is going to come and eat it up and he's going to get a very sore tummy. In fact, when a, when a puppy eats stuff like that, it blocks his tummy and he can't poop and he gets fatter and fatter and fatter and he explodes. Boom! And it's all your fault! <laughs> <laughs> now, I know some people think that I'm a little crazy with that sort of approach, but I ask you, when was the last time you heard of a dog exploding in my neighborhood down in Steveston? <laughs> doesn't happen down there. It doesn't, you have to be prepared with that sort of approach though, that it's not always going to work. So I would suggest you always have with you a quick change of disguise. Something, when you go out walking, take with you a sweater, something like this, and maybe a change of hat, so if his dad turns out to be the ogre, and the family dog turns out to be the hound of the basketballs, and they come running to you and say, where's that big bully? You go, that big bully, he went that way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, and it's important to be prepared like this, because if we don't take action with the baby trash monsters, they grow up to be juvenile trash monsters. Now, one of the biggest problems that we have in the world with trash is the way it gets spread, especially stuff like fast food trash. You know what I'm talking about. 
those McDonald wrappers and what have you, they get distributed around by the burger-munching, slushy, swilling, sticky-fingered teenagers who are probably your kids. You, they will transport that food in their jalopies to a beautiful place and then they'll sit there. And you've, I'm sure you've all seen this. The windows are vibrating with the bass. Okay? They're munching away. In fact, if you look closely with that boom, 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 and you look closely at their faces, they look like demented frogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As they're eating to the base. When they finish, <coughs> the door comes open, out goes the trash. What can you do? <laughs> yo, yo! That trash ain't flash, sitting on the black top. It ain't cool to be a fool. These are the tools. There's the bin. Eminem was right. You only get one chance. Don't blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime, yo. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it doesn't stop there. If we don't do something with the juvenile trash monsters, they become adult trash monsters, the hardest of all to deal with. Sometimes you have to go right back to trash talk. Especially if they've got their kids there and you can embarrass them, go right up to them and say, Yo! Your house is probably so dirty, you're cleaning your shoes on the way out! <laughs> Once again, we're Canadians, we don't like conflict. Here, here's something simple that everybody could do. If you see that happen, you just walk up behind them, tap them on the shoulder and say, Excuse me, ma'am, sir, I think you dropped something. Would you mind? something so simple that every single one of us can do and it really makes a change. So I ask you, deep down, do you want to make a change? Talk about trash. Don't be afraid of the monsters. 